Well, first thing we did was we called Caesar's Palace, and we're like, um, so I don't know if this is uh, you know pager friendly or anything, but is there a possibility that we can jump the fountains? And they were like, yes. And I thought, oh crap. Uh, we went to Greyhound, and we're like, hey, can we get sixteen buses? They said yes. I thought, oh boy. And then uh, someone in the room, it might have been Dover or Dave, they're like, well, we have to jump cars too. And I was like, three jumps? And they're like, yeah, which one do you want to do? And I was like, all of them. <laughs> this all came together so quick. And right as they gave the go ahead, they're like, we're going to do this. And they're like, you can't do anything dumb. And it was literally two days after I landed, a double backflip, 360. <laughs> action figures too and I'm like this is great and then I was just riding having some fun with some friends and I fell down a, a hill that was like 10 foot tall and I shattered my wrist one of the worst injuries I've ever had and while I'm supposed to be testing to make sure that it's okay before we announce it to the world on this 750 V twin I am in surgery I get two operations over three months on this wrist like it, it's bad the idea came out you know mid you know, probably August uh, last year but literally this is this is fairly quick for a production of this size, history, live TV, all this stuff. And I had a broken wrist. So they're like, okay, we need your official yes or no. And I was like, yeah. I jumped cars. I could jump anything. And then I got on this thing after it was way too late to back out. And I did my first jump and I realized you couldn't stand up because, well, you know, the Indian is built for flat track, so the, the foot pegs are kind of, they're off-centered, and you got to be bow-legged to ride this motor. It's a 750 feet twin. I mean, <laughs> dude, it's so fast, but, like, you can't get your legs around it down to the foot pegs, and it's made for sitting. That's why I guess Evil was always sitting down on his jumps, and so I hit the first jump sitting down at about 100 feet, because that's what the guys thought a, a base jump should be, which I think was, was kind of silly. And I'm front end, straight up and down. I'm sitting down on the bike. I'm like, this is what Evil felt like. <laughs> At the end of the day, like I have the opportunity to have, I mean, Evil's three kids, they're all here. Really? In, in Vegas. And I mean, to Robbie can Evil, like coming out, like that's that's pretty cool for me. You know, everyone's coming out and everyone's super stoked on this. And, you know, for me, it's the biggest thing is this is a tribute, man. This isn't about me. This isn't about breaking records. We're going to push everything as far as we can. It. It just because that's what evil would have done. It's not about going out and doing the same thing. It's about pushing the human spirit. And I, I feel like for me, you know, a lot of people, like I said, have kind of been giving me crap. They're like, well, you jumped further when you were 14. <laughs> evil only jumped 150 feet. Like, that's not that big of a deal. I'm like, it is because no one knew you could jump 100 feet. Like, if right. you can exceed what everyone else has, has done. And was evil the best rider? Absolutely not. I don't mean that with any disrespect. He was a salesman, he was a showman, and he was a man of his word. Even when he got, he went to Wimbledon, he went over to Europe, and he goes, oh, hey, the buses are longer than I expected over here. But, but he's a man of his word. That's kind of what my dad always held me to. I mean, there's a lot of things that Evil did that, you know, maybe weren't, weren't the, the greatest. But at the end of the day, this guy shows up. He goes, hey, look, I'm going to crash. It's going to be really bad. I'm going to hit this jump probably around 70 miles an hour, and that's as fast as this bike will go. And I'm not going to make because i got to hit 78 to clear the gap. But you know what? You guys bought a ticket. You all showed up. Thank you. And I'm a man of my word, and I'm going to jump it anyway. And he had one of the gnarliest crashes of his life. Oh. Broke almost every bone in his body, stands up, bones crunching out of his skin, and waves before he gets in the ambulance and, and heads out. And this is a man that says you're not a failure until you fail to get back up. And it, evil wasn't evil because he was great. Evil was evil because he showed up wearing a cape, wearing leathers, no pads, no safety, no anything. Like my dad said, back when men were men. And to be able to walk a day literally 
in his boots. I mean, I got the most expensive shoes I ever had. They're high heel dress boots made by the same company that made Evil's boots when he did 50 years ago. Um, you know, the Caesars Palace Fountain, which is the most infamous and iconic jump. And everyone goes, oh, how can you take such risk? I, I was like, dude, the chance to jump Caesars Fountain, to jump 16 Greyhound buses, 52 cars, all on the same day, live on the History Channel, when you're going to bring my dad's generation... Along with our Willie Scooter generation. And all together to watch TV the same day. I'm not passing this up. All shit aside, like, you know, Nitro Circus, everyone goes out, you have a good time, you do whatever. But when it comes down to it, you're jumping a snowmobile next to a four wheeler. <laughs> next to, um, you know, wheels in a wheelchair. And scooters and whatever, anyone messes up, not just metaphorically, it's a life and death situation. You know, you have trust and you, you put in the time, you know what you can handle and you take that on and your buddies have that, that bond that you don't have in ordinary life. So to do this, I mean, you know, on Sunday, I've got a whole team, all the guys at Nitro, they're putting on the production team knows that if this bike, it's 112 degrees outside. I can pass out. I just stop. If the bike passes out, you know, at a, at a certain yeah. temperature, it starts losing horsepower. I need every bit I can get. So if they hold me an extra three minutes for a commercial break or anything, they're actually risking my life. And they know that. And they won't because even though it's a live event, the guys running the cameras are guys that understand, you know, action sport. They understand what needs to happen. And they're going to make it happen. I got faith in them. Um, the guys building the jumps. They all know that what's on the line. Everything's going to be exactly perfect. And we'll double check everything. But at the end of the day, you put your lives in everyone else's hands. Um, you know, there's kind of that, that camaraderie and that bond. And you do your job. If you show up, there's, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's tough for families. It's tough for stuff. But there's no holidays. There's no overtime. There's no, you do what you do because you absolutely love it. You're passionate about it. And you know, if you mess up, um, you know, somebody else is, is going to be hurt or yourself is going to be, you know, hurt and you take that responsibility on and it's, it's the greatest thing in the world, but it's also something that, you know, I, I feel like it's, it's lacking a little bit in modern society with everything's okay. Everyone's a winner. And it's, you know, there are winners and there are losers in this world. I'm sorry. My daughter, she was three years old. She raced in the strata class and she's like, we tied. And I was like, I'm so proud of you, honey. You did an amazing job. This was awesome. You tried your heart out, but you lost. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I don't yeah. want, like, why am I the asshole? Everyone gets the same size trophy in a participation no. match. It, just to have the Knievel family here, to be able to jump an old bike, like, I would have no reason to jump a bike with no suspension, basically, that's that heavy. But gosh, it was, it, dude, I feel like a man. Watch me fly by through the sky on my dirt bike, repping 199, cause I'm coming in clutch.